about this, right? I'm interested in open source, but then at the same time, I'm like scared of it. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm the type of person that I dedicate myself 100% into a project. So I always think about this, like, let's say you create a library or you're trying to join a community, like let's say Laravel or React or Vue.js or any of this projects that might be open source and people can contribute to it. How do you uh, come in and, and, and say, okay, how much time I'm going to dedicate to what project or to one project? Because sometimes I've seen guys that, you know, they go in and they're contributing to like five, 10 different projects. You get what I'm saying? So how do you go in and, and manage yourself uh, when it comes to projects? I'm more than happy to answer, but I think I want to try and give someone else to answer if they want. But if they want me to go, then just shout out and let me know. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Eddie. You, <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so I think people do want to try and contribute to the biggest project, right? Everyone wants to contribute to the exciting project like React or, or and so on. But the problem is those projects move really fast. There's a, there's a lot to, to, get, to learn and get started, but also they move fast. So imagine like, I know, making some changes and by the time it gets reviewed, you've got conflicts, you get a bit disheartened, they ask you to resolve the conflicts. By the time you resolve the conflicts, then more conflicts have occurred and it's quite, it's quite hard to get used to. So I recommend people start off with, you know, find a project in the community that your friends created or even, you know, your own project. Have you customized your GitHub profile? That makes you a project maintainer effectively already. And when you know, when you understand the flow of how to do a fork, create a branch, and how to create the pull request, and just how that whole cycle works, then at least that admin side's out of the way. You know how to do it. Then you can get involved in bigger projects. But you're absolutely right. Some people do contribute to loads of projects, and I think that's good because you'll learn different things from different projects. So I would personally advise people to pick smaller projects and to do smaller changes. And they've got to remember that it's more about collaboration first and then code second, because you raise an issue with your bug or your idea, whatever, and then you have a discussion on it. And then you make the changes and then you raise a pull request to discuss the changes. So it's kind of like collaboration, communication, code, and then collaboration um, and communication again. So yeah, just uh, keep it small. Like, let me give one example. I'm going to ramble one more last time. Sorry, everyone. But let me give an example. So someone said to me, oh, I want to I wanna add this file to your project or add value. Great. Yes, please do it. Okay, give me a month. I'm going to create one or two pages of content for it. It's going to be amazing. And I was like, whoa, hold on. Hold on. Uh, that's like one or two months where we haven't had any value to the project. And also, that's a lot for someone to review and a lot for that one person to do. If we have no file at the moment, no documentation file, for example, for that area, just create that file and put one line in it, like one line, whatever it is. But that's already adding value to the pro to the project and the community. And then someone else can come along and a second and third line, and then you're collaborating with the with the rest of the community. So my recommendation to everyone is to, to get started. Don't think for the, the biggest project. And also don't think your pull requests or your changes have to be a minimum size. What they have to do is add value. And if you reformat a file and don't make any actual changes, do that in a separate pull request because it's very hard to review someone's work where they've actually made like a one line change, but then formatted 20 other files because it wasn't correctly formatted. So I would recommend that keeping pull requests add value and one piece of value. I want to let someone else go. I think go it's ahead. also interesting, like, while it's awesome to be inspired by some of these people who are able to sling a bunch of pull requests across a, a bunch of different projects, you got to keep in mind, some of these people are actually getting paid, like they're being sponsored by companies to do this full time. But also, as you're kind of working through using open source tools in your own work, when you're using it as part of a project or something, it's a little bit easier to kind of see where some of these holes are, where you can identify that problem easier and be able to have some more context for putting together a pull request for it. 